Whether you are a roofer, a cider, a floor covering guy, or some other kind of trade, if you are constantly estimating square footages, lineal footages, or counts, ProTrade is the software that can help you accomplish this efficiently. ProTrade takes the estimating process and it makes it as easy as seeing it, drawing it, and reporting it. To start a project in pre-built ML ProTrade, simply get the images for the project. For example, someone might send you them to you in an email or you might download them from the internet. Open the software and start by saving your project. The simplest way is to go to My Documents, create a folder for all of your ProTrade projects in which you can store all of the projects that you create with the software. Create a new folder for the current project and name the folder, such as the Smith Home. Open the folder and give your project a name. In this case, the Smith Home Floor Coverings. Save your project and now all of the images that you added in the future, such as pages or other items, will be saved in that folder. Then we can start by coming to the Project tab and filling out some of this information that will be used on your reports at a later time. We can give the project a name, add an address if needed, enter an architectural date so that we can reference what set of plans we were looking at previously, and then we might identify who our client is. In this case, it will be the Smith family. After we've entered all of the desired project information, we're ready to start looking at our plans. We'll come to the Plan tab, come up to the Add Pages button, and browse for those page images that were sent to us. You'll remember we left those on our desktop. We browse to the Smith House folder, select the images, and click Open. You can see on the left in the pages list that they have been added to the project. Now we'll take a minute and we'll rename our plan pages. These plan pages will be used in our reports later, so it's worthwhile identifying them clearly. Here's the first floor plan. We'll tab to the next page, find the second floor plan, and finally the third page is the basement floor plan. We'll exit the rename mode and go to our second floor page. Now before we start doing our takeoff, first we'll need to scale the page. Here we've started the scale tool. We note a dimension on the plan that's 23 feet long, and we draw a dimension of our own to match it. And then we specify what the length is, in this case, 23 feet. We've done one vertically, now we'll do one horizontally to make sure that everything is accurate. We note that it's 29 feet 6 inches. Draw this dimension horizontally and then inform the program that that line is 29 feet 6 inches long. And click OK. It's as simple as that. We turn off our scale tool and click Go to Draw. Now we have all the drawing tools available to us to do our takeoff. But let's look at that one more time. Here we'll go to the basement floor plan and we'll add another problem to it. Notice that as we zoom in a little bit closer, our page is crooked. It's out of level. So first we'll come to the straighten page feature. We'll find a spot on the page that should be level. Click one side of the line. Turn off ortho so we can draw lines that aren't perpendicular. Click the other end and now the page has been straightened. Now with our page straightened we can click the scaling tool and once again scale the page. So here we go. We'll find a dimension on the page. This one's 41 feet 6 inches long. We'll turn ortho back on so we're drawing nice straight lines. Find the other end of the dimension. And after completing it, we'll inform the software that this is 41 feet 6 inches long. Again, we've completed one horizontally, but we'll also do one vertically to make sure that the page is properly scaled so that our estimations will be correct. We'll note that it's 26 feet 11 inches long. Click it exactly at the end and tell the software. Exit the scale tool and once again we've scaled our page. We're ready to go to draw and the estimating tools become available. 
So now we can see our project. And now we want to be able to draw it. So we choose our proper estimating tool. In this case, we're going to estimate the floor covering area for the basement downstairs. So we choose the area tool and start to click around the perimeter of the area that we want to collect the square footage from. You can see as we progress around the building that a color, a shaded area, fills in indicating the area that we are taking off. Also notice over in the takeoff items list that as we progress further around the building the square footage begins to increase from 900 square feet up to 1400 square feet. And that will continue to adjust as we work our way around the building. You also note that you can be as quick or as exact as you need for your project, cutting around any small areas or large areas to get just the square footage value that you want for your project. So as we finish, you'll see that we can end the process by going up and clicking on the area tool again. Now note over in this takeoff items list that the item is currently called SF or square footage, but we can choose to give it a name. First we'll go to the application field and call it carpet. And then we can go to the product field and indicate what kind of product we want to use here. For example, square foot of frise carpet. We'll title this. And then to make the process or the picture a little bit more memorable for us, we can also choose to change the color. So with that complete, we now have the total square footage needed for the downstairs carpet. Easy as that. But let's say we also need to cover the tile in the project. Again, we'll start a new square foot tool, come to this small bathroom area, and click around the perimeter of the area that needs tile. Once again, we can right click and choose to change the application to floor tile. And in this case, we'll name the product square feet of eight inch tile to differentiate it from different sizes that we might use throughout the project. And also we can change the color to make it clear which parts of the floor belong to the other. So now we've completed the square footage for the downstairs and we can move on to the rest of the project. After you've gone to the rest of the pages of your project and completed the takeoff, your final result might look like this. Here we're on the first floor plan and you can see we've identified all of the areas that require frise carpet, the areas that need 12 inch tile, areas that still need 8 inch tile, and also an area that needs some oak flooring. We also went on to the second floor and found areas for carpet and tile as well. Now in this example, all we've estimated is square footages, but certainly we can make use of the other tools. For example, the count tool could be used to measure a quantity of items. Here we're going to count up all of the thresholds that might be needed or the transitions from the oak flooring to another type of flooring. Or if for the project we needed to estimate the linear footage for something. For example, maybe we want to measure how much trim is needed for the project by using the segment tool or the linear tool. And it's just simple as clicking one point of the line and another point of the line and the values show up over here in the takeoff items list. And as with the square footage, you can assign an application and a product. But we'll remove these from our example here as we finish up and look at reports. So we've estimated all that we need for this project. Come to the project tab, go to the reports, and choose a report to view. And here you can see the result. In this report example, all of the materials are broken down according to the page that they were drawn on, such as the first floor, second floor, or basement floor. And for each floor, the products are combined, but only as far as they are the same product and application type. You can also choose to export this report or any of the other reports to Excel so that you can integrate it into another workbook that you've already created. You simply give it a name, export it to your desktop, 
or another location and then open the Excel file and there the report is and all the associated values. Depending upon your needs or your purpose, you can also choose to report the information that you've taken off in different forms. For example, here's a different report. In this case, all of the materials from all the pages have been combined together according to their product type. So if your business is constantly having you estimate square footages, linear footages, or counts, Prebuilt ML ProTrade is a software that can help you see it, draw it, and report it as easy as that.